Hello and welcome to the OSW Christmas Spooktacular! Yes, it's your boy Jay Hunter and it's just past midnight here. Yes, it is Christmas Eve and we've got a KFC Mountain Dew Gold Honey Mustard Barbecue for you. What does that mean? It means that we've got, okay, you know the way Hanukkah has eight days of presents? Well, we've got precisely one quarter of that. Two days of presents. We got today, which will be the March to WrestleMania and the Raw before WrestleMania, but 50 minutes uh, waffling on about that. And then tomorrow, Christmas Day, we'll have WrestleMania 10. All right, so let's get to it. Enjoy. Happy Christmas Eve. Thanks for uh, coming out on this uh, grey, drizzly yeah. night. Fuck the family, Jay. Fuck the family. I'm here with you. Ah, your second family. <laughs> are you Are you really going to have this out by Christmas Eve? Oh yeah, sure. It's only Christmas Eve right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to record it and we're, edit it on we're the same lying. day. Yeah, yeah. Because that's how you make it. <laughs> we're <things>. lying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jay's wrists are going to be slightly <laughs> less bandy than usual. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, how are you, sir? Not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Uh, having a lovely Christmas Eve with you guys. <laughs> Once again, fuck the family. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we do. Tomorrow we'll stay. We'll do another one tomorrow as well. If you oh, want. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Actually, uh, one of our fans quite enjoyed your uh, ruining of Radiohead's The National Anthem, mm. calling it more duck arse than duck arse. Yes, yes. But uh, has postulated here is a song that's more duck arse than more Radiohead. Duck -arse. The, uh, yeah, it's more and more duckers. Oh. Anyway, do you have a listen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is Brass Against the Pot. I hold deep in muddy waters, <laughs> Oh my god. That's just 99% of the song is duckers. <laughs> It's, it's pure arse. It's <laughs> pure arse. It's, it's all down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm backling and just going mental for this now. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I had another one. Oh, really? I had an, and like, I don't want this to become a thing or a segment. Too late, Steve. What <laughs> duck arse are you? <laughs> what duck arse you? <laughs> nice. It's not nearly as duck arsery as that one, but if people do want to submit their duck arse nominations, it has to be a song I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not, there's not many. Nothing past like 2003. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you heard the song by Flo Rida, My House? Was it on a wrestling show? It usually would be, wouldn't because, it? Because he's yeah. one of the wrestling artists. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's only like a little snippet, but it's just because, again, it's it's a song I listened to in the last couple of weeks. So, oh, that's Duck Arse. So I thought I'd bring it to your attention. All right, let's have a yeah. quick sh snippy now. I like it. Okay, this is definitely WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just waiting for the arse to drop. <laughs> Have you, you've never heard this song? Uh, yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit, yeah. it's a little bit yeah, duck yeah. arse yeah. 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 so. I believe there is um, there's a wrestler whose team is very duck arsey as well. Oh, Lana maybe? She did have a duck arsey song, <laughs> you're right. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, no way, Jose. Right, what's that he's got it like. It's very, very <laughs> Doug Arcy. So, um, yeah, well, we ruined yeah. music. music. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. 
Theo, have you watched last week uh, the Raw before Mania? I watched like five Raws before. Holy Mania. shit, Raws! Ha ha! Let us do the Raw before WrestleMania, seventh of March, nineteen ninety-four. Two weeks before WrestleMania, because instead of a Go Home Raw, we're getting a USA special called March to WrestleMania. That makes sense. But fucking Pettengill, he when he tries to explain it, he's just like, oh, yesterday, two weeks, this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> what? Which takes place two weeks from yesterday. Don't confuse the two. Yeah, just get a calendar. Today, Raw, Sunday, USA Special, and then next Sunday, Mania. Oh, okay. So, last week, Crush interfered in Yoko and Macho's match. So the main event tonight is Crush and On versus the Smoking Guns. Obviously. Commentators are Vince McMahon, and he welcomes the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. Bit of banter, Vince tells Teddy, there's some things that money can't buy. Tatanka's special presentation. It's like, bitch, he bought the WWF title. <laughs> it's canon. <laughs> All right, then we got the Smoking Cox versus Owen and Crush. McMahon is upset at Owen's change in attitude, tearing up his glasses and not giving it to a fan. DiBiase quips, you know what they say? Money talks. And Vince is like, yeah, right. It's like, cut to $500 million Saudi Arabia deal. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what they say, money talks. Yeah, right. You know what I love about Owen? So Owen's whole gimmick going into Mania is like, I'm sick of being in Brett's shadow and I want to come out and be Owen Hart, the superstar. And meanwhile, he's coming out dressed up like Bret Hart, wearing his shades and doing his moves. I fucking love it. Yeah, it's awesome. Mullet watch. Okay, so smoking guns, Owen, crush. We got a blonde mullet and mustache, a brunette mullet and mustache, fuzzy grown out roots, mullet and goatee. But then Owen letting the side down with a uh, bit of a Brady Bunch hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> Savat kick that misses by a mile and Crush does a Kung Fu. Wah! Not fooling anyone, mate. Sorry, do you have anything um, about this match? Uh, the only thing I have is that I thought when Owen and Billy were wrestling, it was very good. Like, uh, Billy Gunn is a decent fucking worker. Bart, not so much. Heels control the guns. Schmoz and Crush and Billy go to the outside. Sharpshooter to Bart. Crush sequesters Billy so he can't break it up. Tappa, tappa, tappa. Verbally, of course. Uh, nine minutes and the heels win. And the rocket on heart, ladies and gentlemen. Nine minute match on Raw. Wow. With Bart gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, having watched like five Raws building up to Mania to see a match go this long is pretty rare because most weeks most Maybe. weeks it's just full of like squashes like two or three minutes boom get your move in and win so yeah this was nice it was actually a decent match uh -huh. this is one for you OC here's somebody that's going absolutely nowhere but oh, really? <laughs> Vigil versus Double J Jeff Jarrett oh nice so happy Million Dollar Man is commentating here. Uh, he just rails on Virgil. He's like, here's somebody that's going absolutely nowhere. <laughs> and Vince is like, he's got hurt. Too bad he's got nothing above his shoulders. Hey! <laughs> he's like, oh, he's a man. Yeah, he's a man without money. <laughs> <laughs> he's so awesome. Uh, oh, hey, he's uh, a tenor poor now, though, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Amazing. Ian Hill, what did he get you? He got me two photographs of Virgil signing his ten dollars. I think I assume it was Ian's ten dollars. <laughs> Virgil yeah, it has give to come up ten dollars. Wallet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was signing it, and he posted the photos and the ten dollars to Jay, who gave it to me. And thank you very much. You are the man. Amazing. We have come full circle. The loop has been closed, and uh, three sixty, if you will. Question. So when did Virgil take your ten dollars? October two thousand seven. Now that's a very accurate time. <laughs> how much is ten dollars in two thousand seven <laughs> worth nowadays? And so how much more does he owe you? Yeah, but then or we need to. Or do you owe him change? <laughs> <laughs> we need to factor in exchange rates. And yeah, things like that, yeah, you know. and buying power. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the ten. As soon as he signed it, it's worthless now. So. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's um, I have both the photograph and the tenor itself on my wall. Oh, wow. So, nice. Ian Hill. A winner is you. Oh, is that right? I'll tell you what he's been. He's been a man. He's been a man without the influence of Ted DiBiase. <laughs> he's been a man without any money. <laughs>
Lots of not wrestling. Hide in the ropes. Ref, break it up, break it up. You don't want to mix it up with Virgil when it comes to fisticuffs. Well, good, because close fists are illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Virgil gets on a roll, atomic drop, Irish whip, drops the head, but is DDT'd, one, two, three, double J, picks up the W in 4.45. What a devastating DDT in this one's history. <laughs> Just like that, he turned it around. Uh, what'd you think? First of all, I thought Virgil, he's, he, okay, Virgil is not good. <laughs> but he's he, no good. <laughs> <laughs> but he looked decent here like maybe that's because Jarrett made him look good Jarrett's matches on Raw he just sells for the whole match and then wins with a DDT it's basically heel Cena but like 10 years earlier Um, yeah they're shite (laughs) but his punches are good his punches are great way way better than everyone nowadays Ah, post-match DBLC shows Jarrett on a cover of Country Bear magazine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. But McMahon reveals it to be fake and glued on. And it's like, man, you couldn't afford a stapler? <laughs> Fuck. I mean, you could still, like, Photoshop something back then, couldn't yeah, you? Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and print Mike it. Was MS Paint was around, wasn't it? Yeah. Come on, lads. It won't be that cheap. Vince McMahon breaks out a paper doink mask calling DiBiase a joke but DiBiase has the last laugh on you McMahon that's an improvement <laughs> it's like ah oh, gotcha on you McMahon that's an improvement Jay did, did you get the abysmal ad for the hair club for men I did tell me about it oh my god so this ad was uh, with Cy Sperling if that is his real name mm. ridiculous and it's basically him talking <laughs> about I'm sure it's like Simon no no, it's it's S Y. Oh, yeah. So basically, here they do a horrific Photoshop of putting hair on Mr. Fuji, and it's not even hair. It's just some like black goop just slowly <laughs> crawls down his fucking skull. <laughs> That's awful. He hated the segment. Doink with Dink versus Iron Mike Sharp. This guy's straight out of like a goon in Batman. You know, he's confounded by the circus midget. He's like, oh, where you go? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Pantomime bullshit. Tap the head because he evaded a punch and gets drop kicked. Sharp misses a whole train and don't capitalizes with a top rope giant whoopsie in 233. Down the chest to win Ooh, now the big time here. Tatanka's special presentation of a sacred Feather Headdress by Chief of the Lumbee Nation, Chief Ray Little Turtle, with Chief Jay Strongbow and Chief Wahoo McDaniel there too. First question, are these real Indians? Of course, Chief Ray Little Turtle, that has to be a shoot. No one would pick their name as a crowning turd. <laughs> <laughs> Chief Jay Strongbow, what do you think? It sounds about right. I, I thought, yeah, watching it. I thought, yeah, this guy may have a bit of uh, native blood in him. Uh-huh. Luke Scarpa here. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Native of what? <laughs> Italy. <laughs> yes, Italian American. So now, Ed McDaniel? Yes, a Choctaw Chickasaw Native American. Really? There you go. Okay, I would have flipped it around because your man just looked like Irish or something, you know? Big whiskey nose on him. <laughs> <laughs> Tatanka, I've come many miles. I bring with me some sacred feathers. Uh, Little Turtle says, I've come many miles. It's like, no, you've traveled many miles. (laughs) Or you've come from many miles away. Mm. (laughs) Well done, Chief. Chief Jay was cut off. Maybe he has trouble speaking. Who knows? Tadonga cuts a bland babyface grateful speech, including, I hope to reach the heights of these lads (laughs) who were never WWF champion. (sighs) And those lads respond with, you'll become a great wrestler. (laughs) He's been in WWF for three years <laughs> and has had the longest, most well-publicized winning streak in the WWF. Oh <laughs> no. my God. Uh, I will tell you what he won't turn into, and that's a good promo. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is a black hole of charisma. This was his moment, right? Like, he's getting a long talking segment on Raw. Go out there and wow the fans and wow Vince. And he is fucking shit. It's so bad. Mm -mm. I used to see these feathers hanging in the lodge. And I used to see many, many years of tradition and fame. Why why was this guy pushed? 
Is it because, you know, you think... We're going to ask you this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you'd have Rey Mysterio and he's got the Latin American demographic. Mm-hmm. I don't see a huge amount of Native Americans being wrestling fans. Maybe they are. I don't know. But he was quite popular for a time. But why give him, of all people, the longest winning streak to date? <sighs> He's over to the level that a pushed babyface in 93, 94 is. But that's it. Like, you could literally cut him out and paste in any gormless babyface and he'd be just as over, just as good. Hmm. Yep. Virgil, it's your time. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Virgil has more babyface fire than this lad. Yeah, hmm. that's true. Just like Nancy Kerrigan, all this guy can do is cry. Boo-hoo, boo-hoo. Scheduled next, a guy just like me who knows the value of a dollar. Erwin Orscheisser versus main event, Mark Thomas. <laughs> yeah. I did like DiBiase putting over IRS, calling him a man who knows the value of a dollar. Great man, good business partner. <laughs> <laughs> Taxman with an abdominal stretch. I taught him everything I know. And then he grabs the ropes, starts cheating. Ha ha, I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, work a leg, work a leg, work a leg. For what? A clothesline, of course. <laughs> the right off. <laughs> and that's that. 340. Psychology. To put him away, yes! How about that? Why do they always end these early Raws with the worst parts? Like, this is the worst part of the entire show, and this is your main event. <laughs> main event. <laughs> Maybe they know that people tune out after 20 minutes. So, like, here you'll peak at the first second. <laughs> Probably. Fuck you. <laughs> Probably. Final segment is reserved for Lex Luger, Bret Hart, Yokozuna, maybe? Ginger Nip Hair. This Sunday, one on one, it's Jimmy Del Rey. That's it. The one Gigolo. Your, the Gigolo, one of your heavenly bo- Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Pimping this Sunday's Lex versus Gigolo Jimmy Del Rey. Corny gets heat by slagging American cars in favour of Japanese imports. An old Toyota faring better than a Ford. And at the USA special, Jimmy's gonna soften Lex up for Yoko, who'll give Luger his last match by squashing him. Close with Gigolo doing his taunt. And his <laughs> made event gyration. <laughs> He's so gross. I love how his gimmick is that he's an ugly man. <laughs> Brilliant. So Lex Luger, you know exactly what this is all about. The gigolo Jimmy Del Rey. What do you think of Raw? Um, like, Raw's a very easy watch because it's like 46 minutes long, but it's not very good. Like there's less good things on it than like modern day Raw, but there's also less bad on it. Yeah. Uh, what does that sound like to you? You good? Thumbs up? Yeah. Look, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be watching old draws or new ones or any of them <laughs> <laughs> or any wrestling, <laughs> apart from what I'm contractually obligated to. <laughs> <for> OSW. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, from any episode of Raw, forty six minutes or whatever, yet yeah, they're a pleasant watch. What, what about you, Jay? You happy watching? Uh, Okay, yeah, it's nothing, but I love, well, a couple of things I love about it. I love how low-key the end of Raw is. It's just, yeah, there you go. That's <laughs> it. I, I love that Raw's just a show. It's just a thing yeah. that happens. Ten minutes in after Owen's done, that's it. You know, you can tune out. You won't miss anything. Uh, so, yeah, see you for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Listen, you've already bought it. You've already made your mind up, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this was the go home raw. And at the end The Tonka to getting ton- the feathers. The Tonka getting the feathers and Jimmy Del Rey was what see at Mania or anything? No, it was just Jimmy Del Rey and he was like, Hey me and Lex, woo <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Del Rey closes out your go home <laughs> raw. Well there is still the march to WrestleMania. Uh. The World Wrestling Federation proudly presents 
Yes, a USA Network special, March 13th, 1994, seven days before WrestleMania. The USA special was filmed over two days here at Wrestling Challenge tapings in Lux Sheldrake, New York, February 23rd and February 21st, Raw tapings in Poughkeepsie, New York. They're always trying to the next segment from the last segment, so if you weren't paying attention, it'd be okay until you see the giant Raw banner. <laughs> yeah. Hang on, there's 400 less fans here. Coming to tonight are Vince McMahon and Johnny Polo. Raven, yes. Although Polo wrestled twice on TV, Raw 13th December and Raw January 31st, it was as the bumbling Quebecers manager, like he wouldn't properly wrestle for WWF until September 26, 2000, Smackdown jumping ship uh, a couple of months before ECW closed. That's mental. First Mania with the WrestleMania song. Vince McMahon with another throat burning stormer as the two run down the card. It's so weird that they're green screens to a place that exists in real time. So they want to make it look like they're at the interview podium of old school, but they green screen it instead of just having them in the arena. It's a very strange choice. Welcome everyone to the March to WrestleMania. I'm Vince McMahon along with Johnny Polo and what a matchup you're going to see tonight. Getting jiggy with it. Lex Luger and Jigaloo Jimmy Dillery. Look at these people going crazy. Cut to a shot of people in silence. <laughs> <laughs> this match opens up with my favorite part of this entire show. So it's just hot dogging for minutes. Jimmy comes out and he does his like sexy body wave. <laughs> and it's gross. And then Lex turns around. Bam. He gives him a flex. And Jimmy Del Rey takes a bump. Oh, nice. It's, mwah, nice. It's amazing. <laughs> Steve, what did you make of the uh, comedy buzzer sounds? As far as I can say, that strategy right now. I mean, how do you stop a guy like this? What do you got to do? Maybe get a chainsaw? Would you please leave that alone? Oh, my God. So... The first time I heard it, I didn't know what was going on. And then Johnny Polo obviously had this like board and he'd press random buttons throughout the show and one would have like fans cheering and one would have a eh, eh. there's one with a chainsaw. <laughs> there's one with a eh, 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 eh. and he just kept fucking I think there was one with a baby crying. Yes. And uh fuck off, mate. Like, is this like, you know, the shock jock radio kind of the guy with... Yeah, yeah. from the Lex Express. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it was so annoying. Like, there's there's no place for this in a live wrestling show. And this cunt did it. Steve, is there a place for this in a wrestling podcast show? <laughs> <laughs> that was very Olafonti. <laughs> oh, Randy Savage is such a big baby. Just because he didn't win back the World Wrestling Federation title. He's a little crybaby. Johnny Polo. I remember Johnny Polo back in the day and I thought he was shit. Like not, I didn't like him because he's a heel. I just thought yeah. he was shit. Yeah. I never would have guessed he was talented and is talented and one of the best minds in the business and etc. You would never know. No, mm. he hid it so well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't judge a book by its cover. Unless you include the pictures in the central spot. <laughs> <laughs> Holy no crowd. <laughs> you know, wrestling these days, you know, front section seating of a crowd, you know, the floor seats before the tiered seating in the Mac. This one is floor seats and then the wall. That's it. So there's like 800 people. <laughs> it's insane. It's a small 1994 crowd. Mm. He never should have been in that matchup. Roger well, suffering the consequences. Don't you just love USA chants in matches with two Americans? <laughs> <laughs> Luger and Jimmy Del Rey, unbelievable. Uh, however, very impressed at the stamina of the chant. It's like a fucking video game loop. They just go, USA, USA, but they are at it for six minutes. Because they love their country. And if you stop chanting, you don't love America <laughs> <laughs> and so they're pressured into keep on going mm. uh, <laughs> that is sneaky Low Bridge and Lex jumps out of the ring getting stomped on by Dr. Pritchard and Gigolo works him over for the next five minutes 
It's like Alexa's the heir apparent to the WWF throne. You're just about to win the WWF title, right? And he's selling for ginger nip hair. <laughs> Getting trounced by him. <laughs> Johnny Paul was like, he's like a man repossessed. Yeah, yeah that's quite that good. That was good. He's going to get a top rope, Jimmy Dorey, and no! Lex avoids a moonsault, and that's his cue to Hulk up. Uh, ooh, can you give me some... <laughs> a big back elbow. Yeah. <laughs> Big back body drop. Yeah. Clock Pritchard. Yeah. Snap slam. Yeah. And torture rack. Yeah. Or as Vince calls it, a back breaker. Yeah. And Lexi wins in 836. What do you think, Bjorn? I thought this match opened up with a great spot. And then when Lex made his comeback at the end, the fans were into it. But other than that, it was just a very long heat spot that was <laughs> incredibly boring to watch. Um, I did like that Jimmy didn't get any moves in by being better than Lex. Everything that he got in was like cheating, like double teaming, Dr. Tom coming in and hitting Lex and then he takes over. Yeah, it was a fine opener. It was like a house show match. Hmm. Post-match, the uh, heels come out, Yokozuna and his entourage for a big stare down, and uh, okay, I'm stared down, and he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Lex is like, come on, motherfucker. <laughs> so there you go. Listen to that chant of USA. These people are insane. Wow, what a close-up with the kisser of Luna. Yeah, hey, a hey, hey. The big guy is about to unload on him. Suplex City coming up. Suplex City, bitch. Bammer versus BJ Bill Jobber. <laughs> and hilariously, we switch to what's obviously Raw. There we go. Commentators for the Raw portion are Gorilla Monsoon and Stan Lane. Stan delights, this will be my first WrestleMania. It'll be your last WrestleMania. <laughs> 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 because by the time next year rolls around, he'll be hosting Wrestling Challenge and uh, Coliseum VHS. <laughs> and Vince would give him the boot later year, along with everyone else Jerry Jarrett hired while he was busy dealing with the US government. Big Conti. Mm. Bammer readies himself for a suplex. Suplex City coming up. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Rock bottom. Hot shot on the top rope. A finisher? No. Okay, that's enough. Uh, one, two, three in 337. Wow. Is he impressive? Bam, bam, big low in lieu of a shot on a collision course at WrestleMania 10 with Drunk and Deep. Bammer being proper dominant like Lex should have been. Yeah, it was like there was no even angle or build to his match at Mania. He just came out and won and that's it. Go on, get out there. <laughs> Shite. Quick video package for Alundra Blaze. Did you know I work out? I jet ski. I wear a hat at the beach. <laughs> I'm loving life. <laughs> <laughs> A fucking stay. <laughs> Whenever someone has a, like a promo package about a new character and you don't cut a promo, it's like red flags everywhere. Are you boring? Yeah. But, like it was like Michelle McCool, the love and life, and that's your kind of gimmick. And but as a baby face, it doesn't work. Look at me, aren't I great? I'm so fit. I go for a 5k run. <laughs> Look at how much money I have in my yeah. private tennis club and my, <laughs> yeah. and my private gym yeah. and my fucking jet ski, you plebs. <laughs> <laughs> What's your budget for capes? <laughs> I know I'm stepping in the squared circle to do battle with the World Wrestling Federation champion, Yokozuna. He's 600 pounds, he's an animal, and he's very deadly. Backstage, Bull Buffalo to Tonka. He brings up Yoko, almost ending his career. It's best to note that rather than Ludwig Borga, who gave him his first pinfall loss. Uh, but he's gone, his ankles fucked, and they wouldn't just bring him back. But Yoko squashed him after the match, keeping him out for three months. Mm. Fucking shit promo. Oh my god, it was worse than his raw promo. All the little braves and all the little squads that su support Tatanka. So Yokozuna, you better prepare for battle, because I'm coming to take my revenge. Yay! Well, welcome back, everyone, to the March of WrestleMania. Razor versus Tony DeVito. Uh -huh. Macho Libre from 2006's ECW on Sci-Fi. Huh? Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, or the fake preacher. The priest guy. Yeah, yeah he skedaddled from the Sandman. Uh -huh. This program is deplorable, and it should not be on TV. <laughs> Bad Mang versus the Job Mang. Lock up and Hall overpowers the Jobber. Hold on a sec, right? So, 
Razor is a face, yeah? He's the top mid card face, verging on main event, right? Mm. So he comes out and he's dressed up in all his chains and stuff, and he goes and he gives them to some some like guy, you know, and, and you know he's like giving them the finger, you fucking mind them, right? And then he takes out his toothpick and throws it at him. <laughs> <laughs> you, you cunt! <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> what a heel! <laughs> I'm gonna spit in your sandwich later on. <laughs> Uh, I have to say, he looks fucking incredible, though. Like, peak condition, He's you know, beast. the tan, overall look, yeah. Razor, second turn buckle on the inside. Super Suplex. Suplex City. Suplex City, bitch. Abdominal stretch. Grab the leg and stretch him. Stretch him. <laughs> <laughs> Brett's rope back suplex by Razor. Oh, Razor's Edge and one, two, three. The jobber gets no offense in, <laughs> as it should be, after 4-12. Take a good look, Sean. This is what will be facing you next Sunday afternoon at Madison Square Garden. Woo, I can't wait, Gorilla. What would you think? It was grand. Um, he came out, he battered someone, he looked good going into his title match. I did like that he hit a back suplex off Brett's rope. Like, that's something that you never see him do. So, yeah, that was very, very nice. Mm. He's a good wrestler. He is. He's, he's so Overall, he's good, you know? Yeah. Although, like, okay, so we got lots of guff uh, early... Oh, by yes. whom? By the fans. Cunts. <laughs> yeah. So uh, early on in this arc, we had some pretty bad things to say about Razor's promos. Uh, we didn't really like them. We thought they were slow and a bit shit. Plus he was in the main event. Yeah. Um, Not me, by the way. No, 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 no. Jay, yeah. Jay and me. <laughs> <laughs> Just, it was Mostly yeah. Jay. <laughs> Mostly <laughs> um, what do you think about him now? Have you warmed to him or is he cutting less promos and that's and that's why he seems better or... He is a fantastic upper mid-card guy. You know, a great IC champion that holds up, props up the belt. But fuck off out of the main event tonight. You're not selling a pay-per-view around him. You can't base a promotion or a pay-per-view around him. Yeah. yeah. Can you? Um, no, not a promotion. But he certainly, he can be... He never was, though, even at WCW, which is a shame. Yeah. But, you know, he, I think... Guy. Yeah, but maybe he's more his demons, you know, rather than anything else. But, no, he could be a top guy. Not like... For, I'm not saying, like, the likes of a Triple H in there for a decade. But certainly for six months, maybe a year, then go away again, come back, come, go away again. I think I think he's more than good enough. So, Razor, Yokozuna, you're all in? SummerSlam, Razor, Yokozuna. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Um... Could he face a mid Carter and help him? No. See, do you know what I mean? You mm. kind of need that for a main eventer. Mm. Like, I'd still argue that even after his failed push, Lex is a better face of the company than Razor. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. Even though he, he's got a <laughs> scowl on him. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a main eventer. Yeah. Or he has a main event aura around him. I think maybe it's just like knowing Razor from WCW. I, he always looked like he didn't give a shit. Maybe his character is he's too cool to give a shit. But like not giving a shit is a mid card thing. You can't like you can't be a main eventer who doesn't care. Do you know? Yeah. No, hmm? yeah, there's some good points. Owen, the rocket heart. Mm-hmm. Owen Hart promo. Uh what does he say? Yes, uh, Owen Hart, uh, he comes out and he says that he is the best athlete in the WWF. The fans are chanting, we want Brett. Owen says that Brett held him down and that he would also hold down a younger, better wrestler like Owen is to Brett. He says that Brett is scared because he knows that Owen is a better wrestler and at WrestleMania he's coming for him and he's going to beat him. I'll tell you one thing about Owen. There's a man... There is a man. (laughs) He has never had frizz. Yeah, yeah. How is His hair doesn't frizz up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Maybe he's just lucky he doesn't have that curly hair. He doesn't like have to put baby oil in it yeah. and it comes out all slick and then as the match goes on mm. it gets like pfft. Yeah. So he just comes out when his hair Clown is like yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and his his hair is like downy fluff. <laughs> Do you still have the big oil hairy arse? <laughs> fluff. Todd, that, that wasn't hair, that was a bit of downy fluff. I know if I had a little brother that was better than me, like I am to you, then I would have held him down too. I would have cast a shadow on him all my life. Always nice to hear on. Fuck yeah! The Quake Muffin! Earthquake versus 
the executioner. <laughs> <laughs> Gorilla quips. Oh, the executioner supplying the opposition. I think, Jesus, who's losing this? <laughs> supplying the opposition. <laughs> <laughs> Quake's last WWF match was at the 93 Rumble. He spent most of the year in Japan in war, wrestle, and romance. He's only just back after the Rumble and would leave again in April. But more on that later. Wow. Uh, before appearing at WCW's Clash 29 in November as part of the Three Faces of Fear. <laughs> yeah! No. <laughs> so, a quick hello and goodbye from the future shark. Let me sad. Oh. Tenta trances the masked Bam Bam Gordy with a you're not knocking me down spot, javelin throw, boomy to Jimmy, leg drop, tremors, joined whoopsie, and splat! Off the other end! <laughs> <laughs> Sayonara, baby. Yes! We'll see ya! Uh, yeah, that's it. 3.37. A literal squash. Oh my god, you actually ha- it's pretty much word for word what I've written down here. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that. Todd Hot Dogs about the Hollywood elite celebrities coming to WrestleMania. It's so desperate, this pitch. Look at who's Ugh. free on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, no, Burt Reynolds. Who cares about the fucking matches, right? You know, we have Spurt Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> Rhonda Shears. Jenny Garth. Je- Je- oh, Jenny, yeah. uh, Jenny from 90210. Yeah. Donny Osmond. Donny Osmond, who, by the way, there was an episode of Raw... You know how each week Vince does a gimmick where he gets on the phone and he chats to someone? Uh, It was Donny fucking Osmond. And he basically, (laughs) it was so awkward. He was like, so Donny, uh, you and your brother Marky Mark have had your issues. Um, So do you have anything to say about Brett and Owen? And he's like, we had not. (laughs) (laughs) Me and my brother get on very well, I'll have you know. Uh, And it's just like a friendly competition <laughs> it was so so awkward i wonder has there ever been any professional jealousy anywhere between uh, you and marky fortunately marky and i haven't gone through any situations like that but uh you know there's always people out there trying to create situations and, and trying to you know cause little uh petty jealousies to develop into bigger things so you never know Quickie, well a bit of promos here of no the brett says why do i wear this jacket because i'm the ring general what do I look like? What do I look like? You know why I wear this jacket? Because I'm the ring general. That's what I am. I'm the excellence of execution. Yeah, you like that? Mm. I thought, you know, because my ma bought it for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. like, I, I like it as a concept, but it's kind of like a heelish thing. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Something Cornette would have or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. He did have. <laughs> he did. Yeah. yeah. Bret Hart versus Crush Bra. Back to the wrestling challenge tapings. Polo says Bret Hart needs to watch out for the karate wizardry of Crush. <laughs> Bret Hart needs to watch out for the karate wizardry of Crush. The man is a master of the martial arts. <laughs> karate wizardry. Test of strength with Crush immediately gaining the upper hand. Vince says you won't often find the hitman on his knees. <laughs> uh, fucking awesome roll through counter reversal. Sneaky Fooge was about to Pearl Harbor Brett with Hinamaru, but the ref has none of it. So Crush Pearl Harbors him instead. Russian leg sweep. Brett's rope bulldog. Brett's rope pinpoint elbow. Ooh, top rope big knee by Crush. What's the likelihood of hitting a top rope big knee? (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) Anyway, that's why you shouldn't go beyond Brett's rope. He misses, obviously. Fooge distraction. Clocks him. Small package to crush, but Owen appears and rolls the two over. So now Brett's shoulders are down. One, two, three. Holy shit! Crush won the match! She's all down now! Oh, right now! No, 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 right now! Yes. No, no, yes. no! Yes! The, the, this is the biggest win of his career. It yes? absolutely is, without question. He should just quit right now, quit the business. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me! Uh, yeah, what do you think? Nothing special in it, but it's a Bret Hart match. You're just going to get solid yeah, wrestling, yeah. Uh, solid selling. He does, um, yeah. And you have the angle, which puts Owen over as a heel. It puts Crush over big, because holy shit, he just beat fucking Bret Hart. And it builds up to the match uh, with Bret versus Owen. So as an angle, I loved it. As a match, it was okay. Uh, what do you think of heel Crush in general, like a uh, Japanese sympathizer Crush? 
I thought at the time, you know, in my kind of markdom, I was like, oh, wow, this he's actually a threat. I did okay. definitely viewed him as a threat. Obviously hated him because he was a heel and he was beating up Savage and teaming up with Yoko and all that. I saw it as a step up versus his Kona Crush gimmick. Mm, I agree with that completely. I think this is the best version of Crush for his entire wrestling career. Every version of Crush. Um, I thought like the match is very smooth, but Bret Hart's a boss. Of course, his match is great. Um, otherwise, there's nothing to it but the finish. And your top baby face shouldn't be losing under any circumstances right before WrestleMania, dude. So I was disappointed. But imagine how Bret Hart must have felt. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, the look on his face. You know, this is a shoot. <laughs> so he's kayfabe upset, but he's shoot really upset. <laughs> Bret Hart with disappointment all over his face. A dejected Bret Hart. Hi, I'm Rhonda Shear, host of that late night TV show, Up All Night. A quick segment with Rhonda Shear talking to Stan Lane, and she goes like, me, 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 me. Is she a Muppet? She, she just has this squeaky American accent. It just has go away <laughs> with me. However, she does have. Massive, massive tits. tits. Yeah. yeah, so that's something. And then afterwards, uh, Mr. Lane goes, She's so hot, she's almost combusting. <laughs> okay. What is that? Oh, okay, okay. <sighs> like spontaneous combustion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she was like the host of late night talk. I mean, up all night. Oh, what was it? What was that? What was, I, you know, it was like, her sitting on a couch and people ringing in, talking shit. You know, like the Adrian Kennedy phone show. You just know oh, that's what it was. Something like that, isn't oh, it? Oh, I don't uh, think it was like adult TV. Like Okay, okay. She did have a couple of WWF specials. So she's actually a wrestling fan, you know. Mm. But she'll have to interact with the wrestlers. She was like at a house show and she'll do promos with the wrestlers backstage and come out to the ring and stuff. But she has to like have a bit of crack. So she has to pretend to be like sexually interested in Dink. <laughs> And he's like, oh, I get a kiss, I get a kiss. And she's, ha ha, and I'm trying to dance. And the fucking Heal It song is playing. <laughs> oh, this is really funny. Oh, I love you, D. Yeah. Oh, she's a fucking trooper. You know? <laughs> I'm all here and bad about it. Okay, okay. <laughs> the Quebecers versus PJ Walker and Mike Bell. Just incredible, right? Yo, you dealing with the X Factor. I got everything I ever Yo. wanted, and I'll never Yo. give that back. Yo. Back in Poughkeepsie, the heels are double back body dropped and scrambled to the outside. Have you ever seen jobbers send heels packing to regroup? Fucking jobbers. <laughs> <laughs> now you have. I'll have you know, this is the Mike Bell. Is that your man from the documentary, The Bigger, Faster, Stronger? His Very brother. Good. Oh, it's his brother, ah, is it? Oh, yeah, his older okay. brother, yeah. Uh-huh. Very sad. I was going to say, yeah, that's a happy fucking ending, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Jesus. Hey! <laughs> Merry Christmas! Harry, <laughs> <laughs> turn it right around. <laughs> Uh, no reaction for the jobbers going, yeah, we're doing it. Uh, Captain Lou wanders out. What are you doing back, mate? That's exactly what I have. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> not, not in 94. Mm. He is looking for a new tag team to wrestle the Quebecers. So he's looking for a payday. <laughs> <laughs> you found one. <laughs> uh, you, of course, you remember uh, Captain Lou as he's big mates with Cindy Lauper and who's instrumental getting her on board for WrestleMania 1, the Rock and Wrestling Connection, which really helped out wrestling. And also Super Mario in the Super Mario Brothers yeah. Super Show. Me, 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 mm-hmm. from side to side. We, 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 to the Mario. Wrestler Captain Lou Albano is missing. Repeat, Lou Albano is missing. Oh boy, I don't believe it. Drop Mabel. Mabel's too big. I don't like your style. I don't like your tactics. I don't like you. You got what I mean? Why, why don't you say what you're really thinking, Lou? 
gassy squash, Alabama slam into a Boston crab, Brett's rope leg drop to the back of the head gets a three. The Quebecers go over. It's incredible how nothing happened. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, the, the vortex of the world opened up, swallowed four t- minutes, ten <laughs> seconds, and there you but go. But did it feel like four minutes, ten seconds? Way longer. Oh, really? No, I actually thought Jarrett's match was really long. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. um, the only notable thing about this match for me, Gorilla has one line, and he just says, well, these two won't be able to do all these power moves against the big men with Mo and Mabel because they're just too big. I was like, okay, that actually makes a little bit of sense. Hmm. But the match was still complete garbage. Hmm. Mercifully, it's over. Well, earlier today, Vince caught up to a very volatile and agitated macho man Randy Savage. Take a look. Ooh, a special interview with Randy Savage. Oh my God, this was so good. Pre-NWO macho clad in black. Shockingly, he casually starts shooting. He just said, geez, you know, with the divorce and stuff. Like, okay, shit, you mentioned the divorce with Elizabeth. You know, they got actually got married before Savage went to the WWF in 1984. Kayfabe married in SummerSlam 91 and they legit divorced in, after SummerSlam 92. It was one of the only Kayfabe breaking moments in WWF magazine where they he actually had a piece said, yeah, listen, we're split. So mm. they acknowledge it. And that's it. That's all you're getting. And um, the other one is said, oh yeah, I've been stabbed in the back before by a friend. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> He's just slagging Hogan there. Nice. <laughs> just, mm, get that in there. But, it's, you know, great because, you know, he means Hogan, but it also works here because that's what happened with his mate Crush. Mm. It's all fucking great. Mm. I really felt for him because he just said, oh man, I busted my ass really hard to get a WWF title shot from Jack Tunney. I got it. I had him beat. It's my dream to be three-time WWF champion and Crush ruined that. But guess what? You've pulled a plug on your own career doing that and I'm going to beat the piss out of you at WrestleMania and I'm going to leave Madison Square Garden with my dignity. So Fuck. And I got that shot, and I rose to the occasion. I was there. I did it. This was amazing. This was the best, most heated promo in WWF in years. It was fucking awesome. Like, five star. I would have beat Lex Luger, and I would have beat the hitman Bret Hart, just like I beat Yokozuna. But somebody shattered my dream. Somebody close to me, yeah. And that is Crush. Once before in my life, a friend got me like that. I felt like he didn't have coke before this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he was on a bit of a downer. I felt, no, it's like 4 p.m. You gotta, you know, gotta wait till 7 or so. You know? Maybe he's a bit edgy because he hasn't had his coke yet. Mm. And that's why it was so fucking real. I love that. He's like, interview's over. You understand? Done. And just fucks it. That's it. Oh, it's good. He's like a broken man. He's past his prime, but he's he's dangerous. And he, he's like searching for something he doesn't have. He wants respect and dignity, you know? So, man, good stuff. Mm. I guarantee that I will leave Madison Square Garden, WrestleMania 10, with my dignity. Interview. Interview's over. You understand? Done. Tatonka versus Yo... Is this the main event? It is! Ha ha! It's your main event! <laughs> Tatonka versus Yokozuna with Mr. Fuji and Jim Cornette. Bull Buffalo sporting his WrestleMania-level headdress bestowed upon him by Chief Ray Little Turtle. Prima- <laughs> Chief Ray Crowning Turd. <laughs> Pre-match distraction salt. I was like, what the fuck? Or maybe it's just dry ice. But then, like, Cornette goes up to uh, Fuji and he's like, oh, you want to shake hands? But I want to bow. And so they kind of do both. (laughs) Fucking useless. (laughs) Chop. Chop. Elbow. No. Vince McMahon drills over and over. Yoko's success is thanks to that kind of girth. Zero bumps and 30 seconds in, Yoko's already breathing hard. Oh, my God. This man is knackered. His body is knackered. He goes immediately to rest holes. He's gotten noticeably worse since we've last saw him, like just in the last couple of months. Yeah. Tatanka literally has to bump around him while Yoko stays in the middle of the ring. (laughs) 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 It's like wrestling (laughs) OC. Slow it down. Slow it way down. With multiple lengthy Ionian nerve grips. 
All the wishes of his fellow tribesmen in the Lumbee tribe, the Lumbee nation, and look at this. Look goes in on. Using his weight. Finish of the match, reversal and head into the turnbuckle. Yoko takes his first bump. Buffalo tomahawks up, eh? With a chop, chop, top rope, super chop. Timber! But no, literally the biggest belly-to-belly -belly suplex turns the tide. Brett's rope bonsai drop, one, two, three, and after 9.18, Yoko has momentum going into WrestleMania. Yoko Soto, the WWF champion! What do you think? The last minute of this match was pretty good, and the rest was just kind of sad and a bit shit. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yoko's knackered. He's bollocks. He's uh, cream crackered. <laughs> He's cream crackered. <laughs> and then we close with a special WrestleMania rap. Do you like how uh, whitest man in the world, Vince, kind of bops his head to the music as he's like, oh, we're going to play you out. We're, we're not on a mission. And he's like, oh. <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. You don't want to mess men on a mission with the WrestleMania rap. What did uh, 11 year old OC think of men on a mission? You know, you're going to find a lot. You're going to find a lot of me saying, at the time, I loved the faces, hated the heels. Mm -hmm. So it'll be the same here. I marveled at Mabel. I. Moaned at Mo. Uh, <laughs> Oogled Oscar. Uh, Oogled, yeah, no, I was looking for a no. I was looking for a no. Oogled Oscar and I much maligned Mo. Oh, oh wow. Oh. Did you say he... He was no boy of yours. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what he was. Um, there's a, a, a certain kind of, you know, do you call it a plague? I don't know what you want to call it. In a lot of African countries, um... I'm going somewhere with this, okay, yeah. right? Resident so, Evil 5, I think. <laughs> so we'll say Nigeria, for example. I'll name you Nwanku Kanu, right? He was a good player, wasn't he? He was a good player, but he was billed as being like mid-20s when he went to Arsenal, but he was probably mid-60s. And I'm not even exaggerating. <laughs> not even exaggerating. I believe Mo is at least 55 <laughs> in 94. And I don't care. Look it up on Wikipedia. Look, I don't care. He is not whatever age he says he is at twenty years. <laughs> Mo. 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 <laughs> he holds the elixir of life, is what you're saying? No, because he looks his age. Oh, he's just—he's a, a liar, is what? Yes. You're <laughs> <laughs> we got one more match. This one's in the bag. Ten men in the ring for a ten-man tag. It's gonna be a gala. It's coming to you next Sunday, March twenty oh, in the pay per <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you like how there's only ever one backing track? It's the same song <laughs> over and over. It's a three second loop. Uh, it's funny, WWF magazine had already turned on them, started shitting on Oscar for being a crap manager. It's like, really? Yeah, stop rapping, spend less time. Your wrestlers are faring poorly. <laughs> it's a good point. Seriously, like, um, they're getting a tag title match at WrestleMania, right? And the last time they were on Raw, I think they were on once in the build-up to Mania and they beat Jobbers. But before that, the last time they were on Raw was the Raw after the Royal Rumble in which they lost to the Head Shrinkers. And they're getting a fucking tag team title match. This is stupid. And yet the Steiners... Oh, the Steiners had left at this point. I oh, okay. Left. But the Steiners won the belts for a very short period of time. It's like, at the time, it was just Quebecers, Quebecers, Quebecers for like a year. Yeah. Cons I think the Head Shrinkers then kind of turned face and then... Well, we'll see in it the was next a good few year. episodes. It was a good year, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of scam. We will find out and the rest of... Tomorrow night, Christmas Day. <laughs> 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 oh... Quickie whip round. Who will win WrestleMania? They ask the commentators. Who will win between Lex and Yoko and facing Brett in the finals? Gorilla says Yoko wins both. Stan Lane says Luger wins both. Interestingly, the heel Raven says Yoko beats Brett in the finals. Okay. Very strange. Hmm. And the Big Daddy Sakura Mall in the final contest. I'm predicting Brett the Hitman Heart to go right through Yokozuna and become the next World Wrestling Federation Champion. 
Ha! Hope you enjoyed that one. That was the March to WrestleMania and the Raw before WrestleMania. So tomorrow night, we will have the big one, OSW 87. It's WrestleMania 10. It's gonna be V1 and OC and the host of the year, Jay Hunter. Or maybe I should do the sexy body with... No, that is inappropriate for Christmas Day. But I will see you tomorrow. And remember, a winner is you.